it's been some time since we explored the gems from the Hex integration in Home Assistant. Today we will be looking at a couple of front-end improvements that can be beneficial for your own setup. We'll start in a couple of seconds. When I do videos on the Hex integrations and Hex front-end components, I usually try to go with those components that do not require any additional hardware. This allows every single one of you, even if he doesn't want to invest in specific components, to enjoy the benefits of those either integrations or front-end components. But that's not the case with the next front-end component I will be showing you today. This one requires you to have Android TV or similar device. Although actually, you can check the documentation, it should also work with Kodi, Apple TV, but also with the media servers, as a gamepad, etc. While all those things are possible, in today's video I will be covering only the part that is related to the Android TV remote integration. In my case, I'm using Google TV for Chromecast or Chromecast for Google TV, whatever it is called, and let's call it like that extension on my previous video in regard to Android TV remote, which should be linked somewhere above here. So let's get cracking. First thing, let's look at the documentation. As always, if you do like this custom component, don't forget to give a star to say thank you to Nervin, who is the author of this component. This component is a fork of a fork of a fork, but thanks to all those forks, we now have extensive capabilities that are previously not easily available in Home Assistant. And one of the coolest things is that we have fully functional touchpad plus a slider for volume, which makes it easy to use this on your mobile phones or tablets to control the media devices, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If you want to see how it looks, here is the demo implementation. We are using custom Android TV card, remote, this is the service call that you have to have in your home assistant to be able to use this. Although actually it is not, you can create your own custom calls, but I will not be going through those because it would require separate video. So, if you have remote.service, you can use this custom card. Then we have information about the media player, keyboard ID if you want to add keyboard, title and rows and columns for this remote. And yes, you can pop up the keyboard and you can use this touchpad. So, let's get cracking with the installation and implementation in our home assistant. First, make sure that you have Android TV remote integration enabled and that you have device that is capable of it. Unless, of course, you are doing advanced configuration, then you do not need this. In my case, I have remote.google TV. And as I said, this is a Google for Chromecast or Chromecast for Google TV device, which I've created previously with the on. Next step is to go to HACS, frontend, click on explore and download repositories, and type Android TV remote with touchpad and haptic feedback. Since this is a front-end component, you will not need to restart your Home Assistant, but you will have to clear the browser cache in order to get the components loaded up in Home Assistant UI. Click on Download. At the time of the recording, the version is version 2.2.1. Download and reload. The component should now be loaded in the UI. Let's go to Overview. Let's go to my Media Panel. And wherever you want to add this remote, click on three dots, Add Dashboard add card and type Android TV card. While you may add card through the interface, unfortunately you cannot configure it. My suggestion is to start with the examples that are included with this integration. If I paste the code, it should look something like this. I did tweak the entity names to match my own setup. Let's click save and this is what we get inside our home assistant. We have back button, home button, power on, keyboard button, Assistant button, we can start Netflix, YouTube or Spotify. But as I said, this is just tip of the iceberg for this component. There are a lot of options that are available for you. For example, I mentioned keyboard ID and keyboard mode. This can be either Android TV or default for Kodi. You can play with Android Debug Bridge integration if you have Android TV to use the keyboard ID. You can enable double clicks, double click codes, long clicks, button feedback, slider feedbacks, 
etc. If you receive error like this, that custom element doesn't exist, my slider, you may need to install additional hex frontend component called slider cart. Go to hex, frontend, click on three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL for the git, select Lovelace and click add. The link to this repository will be down in a video description, so you may just copy it from there. Let's close this. And after you've added the custom repository, click on explore and download, type slider, click on my cards bundle, download, at the time of recording version is version 1.0.3, download and reload. And now inside the UI, you should see a slider that allows you to change the volume. But as I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg, go to the documentation, see how you can create custom buttons that do not need to be tied to the Android TV remote, they can be actually lights, custom keys that turn on and off your TV, use touchpad to control your Kodi, how to create your custom icons, custom sources, because this is the awesome thing about Android TV remote, you can create custom sources for the applications if deep linking inside the Android app is enabled, and much, much more. For all of you that do not use Android TV, check out the alternate media platform support. For example, this one is using just the Chromecast. We have examples for the Apple TV, for Kodi, for TVs, for Maran's receivers, and much more. But let's now look at something much simpler and much easier to both integrate that may be visually appealing to you or your better half, especially if you have dashboards on your tablets fixed to your wall, so they can create nicely looking dashboards. This is a simple integration, but requires two internal Home Assistant integrations. Go to Settings, Integrations, and check that you have a Sun, which is a required integration enabled. If you don't have, go to Integration, click on Sun, and that should be it. The optional integration is Moon. Click on it, Submit, and Finish. Now we have both integrations, but as I said, Sun is mandatory, while Moon option is not mandatory. It helps, but it's not mandatory. Let's go to HACS, Frontend, and click on Horizon Card. Previously, we had Sun Card. This Horizon Card is fork out of it, and it has a lot of improvements. It supports both light and dark themes, and you can expand on the data it shows you in the UI. If you like to track where the sun is, if it's important for you because you work in a garden, you have solar panels, or you just want to plan your day ahead, then this card may be great addition to your front end. Let's click on download. Version currently available at the time of recording is version 1.0. Download and reload. Let's go to our overview. And on whatever page you want to add, click on three dots, edit dashboard, add card, click on custom horizon card, save. And this is default view. We have information when the dawn is starting, when is the sunrise, solar noon, sunset and dusk. And you can see and track the position of the sun on the sky, but also the shape or the stage of the moon itself. And yes, this card automatically tracks if you are in northern or southern hemisphere, so it may flip if you are in the southern hemisphere. But you can also tweak those settings. Let's quickly check the documentation. As I mentioned, you can tweak the southern hemisphere flip by adding the southern underscore flip equals false, and this will prevent the image from flipping depending on your location. The other thing that you can do is also disable moon phase rotation. General options for the card are title, moon, position of the moon, pe refresh period, currently at 60 seconds, which is default, fields, southern flip, and moon phase rotation. For the advanced options, you have option to play with the language, time format, number format, latitude, longitude, elevation, time zone, noun, which is the current date and time, and the debug level. In terms of visibility fields, a lot of them are currently enabled, but you can also add things that are currently disabled. For example, if I add moonrise and moonset to fields section in the card, I will get that information here. Or if we enable all of the fields, we will have UI card looking like this. While this card actually cannot do anything to improve your home assistant or smart home, it may improve your visuals for the dashboards that you've created for your tablets on the wall. And if you do like this card, 
click on Start on GitHub repository to give it a star to thank Tom Dietrich for his fork of the original integration and all the improvements and love this card has received. Third and the last hacks improvement that you can do for your own setup is integration. For that, we have to go to Integrations, Explore, type Chime and select Chime TTS. Before we install it, let's talk about it because not everybody wants it, but I know that a couple of you were looking for a way how to do this. What Chime actually does? It chimes the bell or plays a sound before the text notification is spoken via text-to-speech service. Consider it like this. You want to send notification, for example, dinner time or lunch time or close the window, and before you send the message, you want to get attention from the people in the area near the smart speaker. So you first play chime to get them interested and then you play the text sound. Actually, you can try and do that with the normal automations, but the problem is that it sends then two commands. First plays a sound, then you have a pause and then you have text to speech. This one intercepts text to speech, adds chime to it and you have chime plus text. The installation of it is pretty simple. We click on download, download, at the time of the recording version is version 0.7.5 and since this is integration we have to restart our home assistant. While home assistant is restarting, let's check the documentation. As I said, the problem is that you want to play the chime, then you wait for the text to go from the server to the speakers and then it plays. It takes some time. With the chime TTS integration, it waits for the TTS audio from cloud server combines locally sound and audio file and plays it together. Benefits of it are no lag or timing issues, you can customize audio cues, you are flexible in terms of selecting TTS platform, you can just use Chime TTS Say as a service call in audio automations or scripts, which does require you to refactor your current automations, but you can just disable part of it that contains your current text-to-speech and replace it with this service call. And much, much more. Chime TTS adds two new services, or three. One is Chime TTS Say, which is actually what you will be using to trigger everything, and then you have Clear Cache. I usually have my Clear Cache set up at 3 a.m. in the morning to clear all the caches from the text to speech. But we also have Chime TTS Say URL, and this will return the publicly accessible URL to the MP3 file that was generated which is great if, for example, you want to use it with other players, such as Amazon Smart Speaker, because we all know that Amazon Smart Speakers... Yeah, I will keep that to myself. In terms of Chime TTS.say or service call, you have here a couple of examples. This is the basic audio. It will be using this speaker called Living Room. Text-to-speech platform will be Google Translate. And message will be Hello World. If you want to add audio, you just add Chime path, for example, this one here with the audio file, and it will combine that Chime to the text message you want to push and play it like that. If you want to add your text messages with the Chime, you can instead of Chime path, use end Chime path and use different media file to add it to the end of the text to speech message. Of course, you can use both the start and the end one, and also create more complex examples, such as this one here. This one is using Amazon Poly with a specific speed and pushing it to two different media speakers. So don't forget to go to the documentation because there are also a lot of other options that you can use and play and customize your chime underscore TTS dot say service. Oh, by the way, if you are wondering if there are any audio files available already with this custom component, yes, if you go to custom components, Chime TTS folder, you will see a subfolder called mp3s with lots of already available mp3 files for you to append either at the front or at the end of your text-to-speech message. Now that the system has restarted, go to integrations and type Chime and add Chime text-to-speech. Finish. If we go now to developer tools, services, type Chime, we have two service calls, clear cache and say. Let's select say. From the drop down, I will select classical. I will also add bell two at the end. I will leave the delay as is. Message will be hello world. Text platform will be Google Translate. Select a target device. 
and let's call this service. Hello world. And that's it. If we look at YAML, this is how it looks. Device ID, of course, can be changed for the entity, for the media player, for the smart speaker, but that's it. We have data, chime path, for the chime path and end chime path. We have selected those from the drop-down list. We have delay, text-to-speech playback speed, volume level, our message, and what platform are we using. And that's it. I know I've seen in the comments of some of my videos, people trying to figure out how to combine sound, text-to-speech, and then once again sound. And in my opinion, this is the best and the easiest way. But as I mentioned, you have to go through documentation because there are a lot of other options that you can play with here. And I really do hope that you will have fun with this integration. And of course, you are not limited to these files here. You can create your own media files, download them from the internet, get them from fans or whatever, add them to this folder and then use those media files inside your text-to-speech messages. If you yourself found something interesting in the hacks, don't forget to leave it down in the comment section below, share it with us and that integration or front-end component may get added to the future videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe because next week on Tuesday we will be looking at the new SwitchBot K10 Plus smart vacuum cleaner. So hit the like button, check if you are subscribed. And before I end up this video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But also thanks to each and every one of you who has subscribed, liked, watched or commented on my videos. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by either becoming a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button down below, two, going to my merchandise store and getting something there, or three, just using a super thanks on any of my videos. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.